This is Professor of Medicine, Desiree Dubonnet, the man who left America to find freedom. He's no longer a man. Today we're going to talk about one of the most serious subjects in the world. Does reincarnation exist? Is there a life after death? Hey guys, I got a confession. I was Joan of Arc in my past life. I know it sounds crazy, but hey, you should totally buy my book about it for $19.99. Reincarnation. Half of the planet's population shares the same belief that some part of us survives death and that reincarnation is a real possibility. More than half of the people in the world believe this. It is very wrong for us to be insulting these beliefs. So cavalier is our smiling little girl here chuckling at the idea of reincarnation. But actually, quantum theory and a lot of other new science opens the door to this belief. I've seen some pretty weird stories around on Facebook spreading like wildfire. There are stories about little kids who believe that they've been reincarnated. In one story I read, a kid told his village elders that he'd been murdered with an axe in a previous life, and then he proceeded to show them to a buried skeleton with an axe. The kicker? The little boy has a long red birthmark on his head. The incarnation is the belief that some people, not all, but some people, when they die, can transmigrate to another person, to another animal, to another consciousness. The assumption is that when your brain dies, your mind perishes also. That is so deeply believed that science failed to understand that it is, in the end, an assumption only. And uh, there's no reason for uh, why aspects of the mind shouldn't survive the death of the brain. Reincarnation is known by many other names, but it's still, this is an assumption. The idea that we would die at death is an assumption. We really need to take a much deeper look at this. Understand belief, but... Well over 50% of the Earth's inhabitants believe uh, in some form of reincarnation. So it's, it's very widespread. We shouldn't make fun of other people's beliefs. We need to tolerate them, but we need to take a look at it. But as our scientist lady, this goofy little lady, you see, there's a cognitive distortion of all or nothing thinking. That everything is black and white. All or nothing thinking. That's really a problem when we get down to reincarnation and this type of belief. We need to broaden our mind and recognize. You see, most crows are black. Most magpies are black. It only takes one white crow to prove, prove that white crows exist. You know, I've been lying here thinking. With what, champ? Brains, old boy, brains. It only takes one white crow to prove that white crows exist. And here we have one from India. A white crow. Now we know white crows exist. We can do anything we think of. What do you mean, champ? And here's a white crow in the Philippines, so white crows exist. Not all of them are white, not all of them are black. There is exceptions to the rule. We need to broaden our mind and look at it more open. Dr. Jim Tucker, a psychiatrist at the University of Virginia, wrote a book about the experiences of several American children who believe they've been reincarnated. One kid claims that he used to be a World War II pilot, another a Hollywood agent, and another the star golf player Bobby Jones. Lots of people have written books about reincarnation. Maybe they made it up to sell the books. But with a more open mind, with quantum theory, we can see that there should be some type of a nature of a conscious mind that could possibly survive death. We need to have a more open-minded view of this. And if we look at some of the, the factors here, we're going to see 60% of children are male have the past life. 70% of them had violent deaths. We're going to start to see that there's a statistical way of understanding. That this is not just everybody. This whole idea of the reincarnation, transmigration of souls, has a type of reality that we can find if we broaden our mind. And let's look at some of the evidence that was accumulated by Dr. Stevenson and Dr. Tucker. And he was curious enough where he decided to investigate and spent the next 40 years of his career traveling to various parts of the world. And he and his colleagues during that time, we've now collected over 2,500 cases of these young children who were making these claims. 
doctor claims that the children, sometimes as young as three or four, can give obscure and detailed recollections of the historical figures they claim to be. So what's going on here? Hey, maybe they were reincarnated. Or maybe there's more to the story. Well, Dr. Stevenson applied the scientific method to try to understand this. And he tried to rule out fraud. Pretty much rule out fraud in most cases because Dr. Stevenson was a very careful investigator. He wrote in an academic style and like a lawyer, presenting the witnesses where the evidence came from. He had subjects take lie detector tests, sign affidavits. He was so concerned that the evidence would be accepted in the scientific community. James Leininger was a little boy in Louisiana who uh, began saying that his plane had crashed, that he had been shot down by the Japanese. He gave some very specific details. In fact, um, now this was when he was two. His parents were able to ask him questions about these horrific nightmares he had about a plane crash. And he was able to say that he'd been shot down by the Japanese and that his plane had flown from the Natoma is what he named the boat that his plane had taken off of. In addition, the, the boy later saw a picture of Iwo Jima and said that was where he was shot down. Also, it began saying that uh, he was the third James. When his dad searched online, um, he eventually found that there was the USS Natoma Bay. The Natoma Bay was involved in the Iwo Jima operation. There was one pilot from the Natoma that was killed in, in Iwo Jima and his name was James Houston, Jr. Uh, so James Leininger would be the third James after the, the junior. Another detail that James gave was that he had a friend named Jack Larson, and it turned out that there was another pilot on the Natoma named Jack Larson. The child was talking about a past life from more than 50 years before, which is unusual in our cases. So there was seemingly no way that he could have known the details that he came up with. His father was an evangelical Christian who was totally resistant to reincarnation. But his son gave out so much information about World War II, they, they said, you know, he could not have learned this watching Sesame Street. I saw you. Let's look at the scientific alternatives here. Studies published in the journal Consciousness and Cognition found that people who believe they lived past lives are twice as likely to make memory errors as the general population, specifically source monitoring memory errors, where you forget where a thought or idea originally came from. Well, she brings up a point, but that is still going to be an all or nothing cognitive dysfunctional thinking to dismiss all of reincarnation because of a possibility of a story or two. We have to have a much more broader mind and realize it only takes one white crow to prove that white crows exist. Barbara was born nine years after Anne Frank died. When Barbara was a little child and said, my name is Anna Frank, she had spontaneous memories of her past life as Anne Frank. Uh, at the time, her parents didn't even know who Anne Frank was because the diary of Anne Frank was not yet published and they thought she was making this all up. What makes her case compelling is not that she has the same facial features as Anne Frank, but she had memories from childhood and by the time she was 10, her parents took her to Amsterdam and uh, the father wanted to go see the Anne Frank Museum. Barbara said, we don't need a cab, it's right near here. And they said, how can you possibly know? You've never been here. Somehow Barbara went straight to the Anne Frank house, looked at a wall and said, mommy, look, the pictures, uh, movie stars are still on the wall. And her mother looked at the wall and said, Barbara, there's nothing there. And the tour guide said, actually, the pictures that Anne Frank had clipped out of magazines of movie stars had been on that wall. That was the first time her parents realized her past life memories were real or that her reported memories were not fantasies. And Barbara became a childhood writing prodigy just like Anne Frank had her first book published at age 12. 
found that when people with this tendency are repeatedly asked to talk about a suggested idea, like say having a past life, some of them go on to convert the idea to a full-blown false memory. In the psych world, this is called the power of suggestion, the great power of the mind to realistically blur the lines between a story or idea that's been suggested to us and something that's actually happened. But to dismiss four billion people's belief based on this little twist of evidence, that's a little wrong. Let's look at some more ethereal. Let's consider the four areas of scientific studies which strongly point to reincarnation. One, hypnotically induced past life memories. Two, spontaneous past life memories. Three, near death experiences and out of body experiences. And four, the phenomenon of consciousness. Let us consider the first hypnotically induced past life memories. When trained hypnotists help people to recollect their past going back to their childhood, infancy and earlier, research has shown that more than 90% of all hypnotizable persons furnish memories that indicate previous lives. Spontaneous past life memories among children. I worked with several children. They all remembered their last life. It was amazing. And then when they go to school, they sort of get brainwashed and forget it. Near-death experiences, MDEs, and out-of-body experiences, OBEs. Near-death experiences, or NDEs, are experiences of extraordinary visions and perceptions during periods of unconsciousness among people who are medically dead or nearly dead due to causes like accidents, diseases, surgeries or attempted suicides. These people returned from the dead or the near dead to tell us their amazing experiences. NDEs and OBEs have been investigated by researchers from across the globe all of us people investigating near-death experiences see the same pattern of elements. Often one of the first things to happen at that right after that life-threatening event, often the first element of a near-death experience, is what's called an out-of-body experience. Consciousness separates from the body and goes over the body. From that vantage point they can see ongoing earthly events which may include their own frantic resuscitation efforts. After that they may go into or through a tunnel. Often at the end of the tunnel is a beautiful, mystical, unearthly light. And then once they pass into that area of light, they may be in unearthly landscapes. Uh, often they're described as being beautiful without any comparison on Earth. There may be colors there that are so beautiful that they don't even exist on Earth. They may hear music so lovely that it is beyond anything possible on Earth. In these unearthly realms, they may have what's called a life review, where they see part of their prior life. They may see their deceased loved ones. They may have joyous reunions that they people they knew on Earth who died. And then ultimately, at the end of their experience, they often have to make a decision about returning to their earthly life or not. Could the mind which splits apart from the physical brain be, in essence, the soul, which continues to exist after final bodily death, according to some religious doctrines? Let's now discuss the fourth scientific evidence for reincarnation, the phenomenon of consciousness. Many scientists today assume that consciousness is produced by the brain, but this assumption has neither been demonstrated experimentally nor explained theoretically to any reasonable degree of satisfaction. But now uh, in, there's an increasing number of scientists in various fields who dare openly to challenge this old uh, paradigm and uh, we're moving toward what some have started to call a post-materialist paradigm uh, and now meetings are, are being organized and books are being prepared uh, with regard to this uh, post-materialist paradigm so um, I can predict that it's only a matter of decades before we have a new scientific revolution and this time it will be about mind, consciousness and spirit and it will be probably the most important conceptual revolution that we've ever had in the history of uh, humankind. Thus, scientific studies in these four fields offer strong evidence for the existence of a soul 
different from the body. No wonder that Austrian scientist Rudolf Steiner remarked, just as an age was once ready to receive the Copernican theory of the universe, so is our age ready for the idea of reincarnation to be brought into the general consciousness of humanity. So now with an open, more tolerant mind, let's look at both sides and recognize it's not just all or nothing, but there is an ability to possibly understand reincarnation, because I think we have seen the white crow. 